Thank you, Lucille, and welcome everybody um, to Newcastle this afternoon, including those from Durham. Okay. So, as Lucille says, my name is Annie Russell, and I'm the Marine Education Officer uh, for Newcastle University. So, my job involves working with children from age five to 19 and teaching them about marine science and marine technology. Every year, I run an uh, environmental summer school, all focused on the marine environment, called Splashdown. And this is aimed at eight to 11 year olds. And as Lucille said, every, on the last day we have a presentation ceremony um, so the children can share with their parents and their friends what they learned throughout the week. So one parent in particular, Lucille, asked me, what did I do? How did I get these children to stand up so articulately, speak so passionately? In other words, what did I do to give, um, in order to get children to give presentations. In order to do that, I need to explain a little bit about myself, a little bit about where I work, and a little bit about my philosophy to teaching. So, first of all, this is where I work. I work in the Dove Marine Laboratory, um, which is the marine uh, field station for Newcastle University. Uh, to put it in context from here, it's about 10 miles east of here, um, just between Tynemouth and Whitley Bay, in a little village called Colourcoats. And I feel quite privileged to work here. What an amazing environment. Um, the Dove Marine Lab, the main thing that happens there is research, teaching and, and our outreach. As you can see, it's a um, perfect location for teaching marine biology. You can see the beach, we've got caves just to the left, we've got the rocky shore just over to the right, and we've got brilliant access to the River Tyne. For me, this is um, a dream position for teaching children. Now a little bit about me. How did I become a marine education officer? Well, first of all, I've got a degree in marine biology. And I've always enjoyed being out, outside. I love exploring. Um, and that's how I be, um, came to do my degree in marine biology. After my degree, I went, uh, became a, a diving instructor. So as every marine biologist and dive instructor wants to do, they want to go and travel the world. So I did for several, several years, work in various places as a paddy diving instructor. After several years of hearing, when are you going to get a real job? I then came back, I retrained as a, a secondary science teacher. Um, that was about six years ago. And by the end of my training, I realized that the school environment wasn't for me. It was quite restricted for my, for my personality. And I wasn't getting to teach what I am really passionate about, which is the ocean. So again, um, like Sally was saying earlier, a little bit of luck. I saw the job advertised at Newcastle University. They wanted someone to teach children about, um, about marine science and marine technology, um, which was perfect for me. It brought everything together. Um, I didn't want to be in the school environment. I didn't want to do mark exams. I didn't want to do school reports. I wanted to teach about the ocean. So it was a um, perfect place for me. I work within um, a team. Um, a team of uh, outreach officers. And within our team, we work with following aims. First of all, we want to cre cre increase ocean literacy. So what is ocean literacy? We want every child and adult to understand their effect on the ocean and the ocean's effect on them. And that can be that uh, the, the ocean's hugely unexplored, the ocean controls our climate, the ocean is under threat, there is only one ocean, and humans and the ocean are intrinsically interconnected. For me, this is the key, as we need well-informed young people to find the solutions to the complex issues our ocean is facing. So by teaching the young people, we hope we're going to do this. We hope by inspiring children in a very creative and hands-on way, the children will give them knowledge and confidence, which will empower them individually to be the environmental guardians for our ocean. So in fact, the legacy of the outreach programme is the children become the teachers. 
So the summer school, we've been talking about Splashdown. What makes Splashdown summer school different from the traditional school setting? Well, first of all, I'll describe last year. Last year, we had 30 children enrolled from 15 different primary schools. The focus of Splashdown is very clearly about the marine environment. And it's led by myself, a marine biologist, along with a few undergraduate helpers. The entire week is very relaxed. I set a theme for each day, but I am very lucky I don't have to stick to those themes because I'm not assessing the children. I'm not testing them at the end. So I can be quite flexible with the program. I generally have lots of activities up my sleeve. And then as the week goes, I judge by the children's their actions, their questions, and what I'm going to do next. So really, the children's actions, comments, and questions really do guide each session. I also feel quite lucky because I'm not pressurized by the time. So I can um, respond to individual children's questions. As I also think it's quite important at this age that the children's enthusiasm, their curiosity, their interest, and their innocence is all encouraged at this age. I myself am passionate about the marine environment, so I love it when I get questions, so I get to talk about what I want. As I mentioned, we take a very um, creative approach to our, our teaching. We try to give the children access to things they don't necessarily have in school. So that's the marine experts. So I have at hand, I work in a university. I've, I've lots of marine biologists I can call on. And um, we've got an aquarium at the Dove Marine Lab, which you get um, to, to use the animals. But the major difference, I think, from school and home is we don't really worry about the mess. And I can um, vouch that sand really does get everywhere within a marine laboratory. So last year, what were the themes of Splashdown Summer School? So each day we individually focus on one thing. On the first day is when I get the children in and we talk about rocky shore ecology. The children learn how the rocky shore works, they learn how to classify the animals, they learn about all the different ad adaptations of the different um, marine creatures. And then on day two we always have um, a focus on, on human impacts and last year that was in marine pollution. So again, we use the shock factor of marine pollution, of all those things that are happening out there, and really get the children to think, what can they do to stop these problems? What can they do individually to help the marine environment? And day three is normally my favorite day. That's our marine mammal classification day. So in an ideal world, I'd love to take all the children out on our research vessel and we can go whale watching. But this isn't always possible. But that doesn't prevent the children from learning the scientific skills needed um, to spot the dolphins and the, or the marine mammals. So you can see in the top right picture, I have made up a mock ocean in, on the beach, and then half the class are little marine puppets, and the other half are spotting and what they are, and they record um, the different creatures that they find. So they're learning the scientific skills in a fun way. And there's no better way to finish off a uh, marine mammal day than have a good old competition, a sand sculpture competition, where the children have to um, create or build their very own marine mammal. The winners of the competition are those that are most creative, and obviously they have to be anatomically correct as well, so they can, again, show me what they've picked up um, from that day. On day four, is generally the children's favorite day, because that's the day they get to show their own flair for science, and they get to go out and do a mini research project to do in the rocky shore. So they really choose what they want to do. Some children are obsessed by hermit crabs, some are obsessed generally all by crabs, and some want to know where different sea anemones live and why. So they, I help them design their own project, and then they go out in the rocks, spend the day, and they do all their own research. And then, Lucille was interested in what happened after that. Well, I find from five years of doing this that children during the summer want to have fun. They don't generally want to sit down and do lots of writing. So I don't make them. I give them a choice. I say, you can write up, you have to write up your research or you have to communicate your research. You can do it in either a poster format, you can do a leaflet, some children want to write a mini thesis. That's perfectly fine. 
um, they, they let them choose. All I'm really interested in is finding what they've picked up from it and what they've actually enjoyed. So then in day five is a celebration day. On the celebration day, we do the traditional thing all young rainbow elders should do. We go crabbing and we have a barbecue and they write up their, their projects and they get together and they, they get the presentations because in the afternoon, that's when the parents turn up and uh, they tell their parents what they've done. So going back to the original question, how do I get children to give talks? How do I empower the children to talk? Well, first of all, you can see I've developed the children's knowledge, which is easy as the marine environment is really engaging and the children have a natural curiosity. When they do the presentations, every child speaks, either individually or within a group. How we divvy up what the different children talk about is on the board, I write the different topics of the mini, re or mini research projects or could be the each themes of the day and then the children pick what they want to speak about. And that's important. Rather than getting children to do presentations for presentation's sake, let them speak about something that they actually care about. So that had a huge impact on it as well. The children present in their own style. They're really telling the story. For me, there's no right or wrong answer of what they have found out in their research. They're explaining what they have discovered. So by the time the children come to do the presentation, the big thing I think as well is I've established a good relationship with the children. So they trust me and the children's confidence is built up over the week. While they present, I'm always in hand, at the side, nodding, going, you're, you're doing great which I believe gives the children confidence. They know that I'm not going to let them fail. They know that I'll go and prompt them if, if they need it. But it's worth noting, I rarely need to prompt them. I actually really enjoy listening to the presentations. It's very satisfying for me, who's been teaching them all week. And in the presentations, they're using words like zooplankton, crustacean, echinoderm, zonation, my results show, and I think. My love for the oceans clearly rubbed off of, on them, and it's great to see the children have become the experts. They have become the teachers. The children have spent the week finding, exploring, discovering, and doing, and this is their chance to report it all back. I also find it particularly interesting to find, to listen to what the children have picked up. I could spend the whole day talking about high-level science, high level um, classification, and nine times out of 10, when I ask them what they've learned, it'll be in something completely incidental. It'll be the boat they've seen on the horizon. They've learned how to sex a crab, how they hold a crab. An arm of a starfish falls off, but it can grow back. They want to know what the fisherman's caught. Completely incidental. So I have learned, never underestimate the children. The stories they tell is a reminder what precious years these primary years are. The child's brain works in a completely different way to the adults. These primary years should be embraced rather than preparing the children for exams and secondary education. So what do I think works? What have I learned from teaching children? Well, first of all, it is very, very important that, and I'm a big believer in exploratory and independent learning. The children need variety. I encourage the children to be curious, to ask questions. I ask them a lot of questions, and the children develop their own voice and opinions over the course of the week. A relationship has been built up between me and the children. And also when they come to give their presentations, they've been in the lab all week. So when they give their presentations, they really feel that they're hosting the event. They have complete ownership for it. My colleagues tell me I have a very robust, a robust approach to teaching. I believe this is due to having grown up on a farm and having two big brothers. We had to be quite robust. I treat the children as adults. I don't dumb down the science, as I've had many of interesting conversation and debate with children about the conditions of our ocean. 
and how they're managed, be it marine pollution, global warming, fisheries. So again, never underestimate the children. An eight-year-old can have great insight into the fishing, in the fishing policies. I sometimes think we should send them to Brussels and they could sort out a lot of the problems for us. Never assume the children won't know the answer. I make the children responsible um, for their own actions and their own learning. And this can be very simple as, if you stand in a deep rock pool, you're going to get wet. So to sum up what I've discovered by teaching young people, they definitely need to be inspired in a creative way. So the children, the, the children can gain confidence and they're empowered to be the environmental guardians of the future as if a, a, they realise what the wider consequences of their actions actually are. We hear it all the time. If the children are actually interested in something, they're going to learn. Or quite simply, I think, create the right conditions and children will flourish. Thank you very much.